everybody. Good evening. Hello. Um, my name is Angela. I work with Wine Connection and I will be co-hosting today's live masterclass on Spanish Rioja wines. Um, so just before we start, uh, once uh, before, sorry, Oscar starts speaking, I'm just going to remind you guys, if you've never done any wine tasting, how it's done, it's pretty easy in three easy steps. First step is looking at the color of the wine. It's gonna be particularly interesting today as we're gonna have two wines who are from different vintages. So to look at the color of your wine, I highly recommend that you have a white surface as such next to you or white paper so that you'll be able to look at the different nuances that you're gonna have in your wine glass. Because uh, depending on the age of your wine or the grape varietal, uh, your wine is going to have different colors. Some might be a bit more reddish, some more purple hues, and the older the wines get, the more orange or brownish tints they're going to have inside of them. So that's step one, looking at the color. Uh, step two for wine tastings is what we call the nose uh, step. So we can actually split this into two parts. So what we call the first nose, so that's when you first open the wine bottle, you pour yourself a glass in, and those are the first aromas that you're going to smell coming through your nose. So the first nose, you guys just try and, and figure out what kind of aromas are the first to express themselves, and then you can move on to the second part, which is the swirling the wine, or like as such, in the glass, which is going to allow your wine to breathe a bit more and get a little bit of oxygen, so allowing for uh, the wine aromas to better express themselves and maybe find more hidden aromas that you didn't notice at the beginning. Uh, so once you've gone through this uh, second step of the nose part, we're going to pass on to the third and final step, which is the tasting of the wine. So when you taste your first sip of the wine, I actually recommend that you guys take a small amount first in your mouth, a small sip so that you can sort of move it around in, the, in your mouth and really feel all the different aromas and textures that you might have without having too much liquid. All right, so you can either taste this wine with food or without, whichever works for you. You're free to do it however you prefer. All right, so. Those are so three easy, spe easy steps for wine tasting. I'm now going to pass on the virtual microphone to Oscar. Go ahead, Oscar. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Uh, well, my name is Oscar Rioja, but it is very particular family name. As today, we, we are going to drink wines from Rioja area. Um, I normally, I base in Hong Kong. I've been already 12 years living in Asia. But about this crazy pandemic situation, my boss called me back in the beginning of February to La Rioja uh, to got me here stuck. And now, I, actually, uh, the background is the my when I was a kid, that was my my room. I mean, I'm in my mom's room because I don't have a house here, and I and it's good to be here with all of you. It's my first uh, virtual testing so, uh, for me. I'm a little bit kind of very excited about the idea of doing this because first time they always say we can be very lucky you know anyway if you have uh, any doubt or any question let's do it more uh, in, uh, in this case interesting you can you can stop me and and do this as i i gonna follow um some uh, ideas that uh, angela got me that we are gonna first do like a short video it's going to be only uh, two minutes they can give you an idea about the winery eh? the winery in in la rioja oriental what is before it used to call baja is in the south of rioja and it's a very beautiful uh, monastery eh, of the 16th century let's see if i'm able to do it i've been practicing with angela 10 minutes before okay let's see okay should be this Okay, let me start from the beginning. Okay. As probably you see, this is the monastery. So they've been doing wine for many, many years. The monks there, till my boss, Eduardo, Santos bought in, in the 90s, 80s, and it uh, created the commercial brand of Baron de Ley. Mm -hmm. As probably you imagine, before the monks, they didn't have commercial brand. 
You can see the basically the, the grave majority of Rioja is Tempranillo uh, because I know in Singapore I've been many times. Uh, Singaporeans are very well known about different areas and wines. I guess you already tried before. Mm -hmm. Here is a little bit some of the wines we have in Baron de Ley, but in, in Singapore at the moment you only can find the Reserva and Grand Reserva. We do hand harvest and also one of the important things of Baron de Ley is the vines. We have our own states. Is one I think in Rioja we are unique, almost unique, that we, we can produce for our own state. We have more or less 1,000 hectares of our own grapes. This is some of the, in Baron de Ley now actually we do uh, 16 different kind of wines because we are using the states that we have. Um, we have quite a small production for most of them. Actually, the Reserva, the one you, you are going to drink today with me, is one of our, let's say, popular commercial wines. Um, it's very, very successful in, in Europe. Okay. 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 Angela, we are doing good. I say every... I did it well, the setup? Yeah, so far, everybody ah, okay, saw okay. the video. We're back to normal. Okay. You're in the first, uh, you're in the main image. Okay, if you want, I can do now a very short five minutes, uh, seven minutes uh, PowerPoint, like uh, you can make uh, in your mind where is Spain, where is Rioja, and a little bit about the different states. Okay, let's try again. It should be... Okay. Uh, let's see Angela because I was practicing with Angela before. Okay, let me do one thing. I need to open. Yes, I remember. I need to open first. Yeah. Perfect, so perfect. <laughs> actually, while, while uh, Oscar is opening his PowerPoint, uh, do you actually recommend that we uh, open the Grand Reserva and Reserva now just so that the wine has a bit time to breathe while you're presenting? Okay, let's, let's, okay, because Angela told me don't open, I mean, in general, if and in a testing, uh, for example, the Grand Reserva, this one, I like to open at least 45 minutes before. But anyway, because this is a special occasion, let's, let's open here. In the beginning, you, using the, the small, um, well, there is a very, some people, they like to cut here, other people uh, from here. Uh, I've been trying to to discover what is the best with the experts and a general is something like a, it depends how you like you know in me I normally I use him from the top mm -hmm. we get it in the center and then with the hand Perfect, perfect. So if you guys haven't opened your bottles yet, uh, as uh, Oscar mentioned, it'd be probably be good for the uh, the Grand Reserva to have a bit of time to breathe um, before we taste it. So anyways, it will be the last wine that we're going to taste. We'll generally taste the Reserva before, but allowing it a bit of time to breathe would be best for it. All right. Okay, I did the first one. Using my mother's Corker, what is still alive? Okay, I'm gonna use it the first glass to let it breathe also. And now I'm gonna open the Grand Reserva. Oscar, a small question. Are you originally from Rioja? Since you, your mother yes, is, is actually living there right now. Actually, I'm Oscar Rioja from La Rioja, living in Rioja, yes. Everything <laughs> in me is Rioja. I, pretty convenient, pretty convenient. <laughs> yes. I've been working almost 10 years for the, this group, Baron de Ley, in developing Asia markets. And it's been a very amazing pleasure to discover Asia from one of my passion, that is the wine. In, this is one of some of the questions they always ask me in the in the normal testing is if the winery is, is mine, no? I work for this company almost 10 years, but this, 
Uh, the owner is called Eduardo and he's a 76 year old. What is his life has been uh, wine. He wanted to, to create a new concept. It is, was value, uh, value for money uh, wines, like a middle class. They were able to afford like uh, the more high class uh, wines. It's been the, the motto of the company many years. And in my family, we have a, a stage. So we had grapes. So basically my grand grandfather, my father, or so not my father, uh, because it's for my mother's side, they've been like a produce, uh, selling the, the, the grapes. Because in Rioja, as Bordeaux, probably you know, most of the 80% of the grapes is in hands of little growers. And these little growers, they sell the grapes to the commercial um, wineries. In this case, as, you, as I told you in the first video, Baron de Ley, we had been investing every year the, the profits to buy estates, more estates, and now we have 1,000. So we can produce uh, from our own estates. Okay, I have the second one. <laughs> Normally, we always do the first smell to the core to see if the, the, they have the illness of the core, LTD, and you can feel it because normally it's kind of rotten, egg, and it's quite strong. So in general, if the wines, they've been corrupted, but the, the illness of the core, you can feel it in the first. Mm -hmm. in, uh, it's normally, when you're using natural core, it can be probably a 4% of the, of the, of these wines, of course, they have this ill. Eh? It's something normal. Unless we can let it breathe in the glass. And also if we move it like this, we can try to open. Eh? And also what I do always is like a first smell. Still, it's a little bit of redacted because this wine is, uh, the vintage we are gonna drink today is 2013. So we are speaking is about seven, seven years, eh? not very, not very long to Gran Reserva, but in general, uh, Rioja and Bordeaux, the difference is uh, in Bordeaux, the, the Grand Cruz, they normally, they are wines to really keep eh, for long, 15, 20 years, 30. In Rioja is a different concept. We do wines more for uh, in the reservas between five and 10 years. And of course, you can find some brands they can keep 15, 20 years. Eh? But in general, the average is to be consumed between five, 10 years. Mm -hmm. Okay, Angela, do you think we do a little bit about now the PowerPoint? Ah, yes, here. Okay. I did good, Angela. You can see the PowerPoint? Okay. Well, in this case, it's gonna be fast. You see the, this is the monastery. As I told you, it's from the, for the uh, 16th century for monks. These monks, as you probably know, they were living from the farming and also for animals. So this monastery, they have all a part of the half farming because it's close to the Ebro River where they have very good soil to do any kind of uh, agricultural product. They also was specialized in farming. So they have cows and sheep and everything. Eh? The thing is, a little history about the monastery, what is it really funny? The, um, when it was the, the, the summer, um, I don't know how to say in English, but it was in Spain. It was a time when the, the monarchy got uh, uh, so many um, estates and buildings from the, the, the church and it got to the hands of the general. And this general, he lost the monastery in a, in a playing cards, but it was funny. And the new property, they, they sold out. And, and this is when my boss, Eduardo Santos, he bought in 1980. And the first Rioja Reserva, it was 1985. Okay. So I ask you, just before you start, at the top of your screen, normally you have a full screen mode where we'll be, we'll be able to see. Be vale. Okay, let me see how I do it. It's the last this... icon normally. Okay. With the two arrows. Okay, yes, here. Okay, perfect. Well, here is Spain and you have Rioja is here. This is the Ebro River. We are close to the Atlantic. And this is where Rioja in a very uh, small area, as you probably see, I don't know if you can see my arrow. You have, this is, will be like a, a Noro Rioja, Rioja Alavesa, Rioja Alta, and there's 
here is Rioja South. And I will tell you later in a map of Rioja. Let me see. Okay. Baron de Ley, this is the, as you see in the label of Baron de Ley, you can see this is the bells. We decided to use this as a logo because, you know, in the monastery, in those times, the bell it was very important to announce the bell to wake up, bell, bell to pray, to eat. And we thought this could be a very interesting using this iconic of the bell to get it in the logo of the company. You see the, the picture of the, it was four founders, but basically the, the main, it was um, the one, let me see again, this one, it was the owner and it's still, all of them that are still alive, that they are retired, but the, the main owner is this one, what is Eduardo Santos. Eh? The other one, the one is dressing very elegant, is the winemaker, Pedro Guas. Eh? As, as you see, it was founded in 1985, was the first commercial wine. Eh? Even they bought it before, they needed to get ready the winery and the first vintage was 1985. Eh? Well, you see some pictures of the, of the winery. And the good thing is in the concept of the, some of the more important chateaus in France, where the winery is just around the stage. We have more than 700. Uh, the philosophy is we have our own vineyards. We are the biggest viticultor, as I told you, from the 16th century. Uh, and we are specialized in premium Riojas. Mm -hmm. The thing about on the lay is we always been more international um, brand. So we've been using grapes from the south of Rioja or Rioja Baja because we normally in that area is far from the Atlantic. We have less cloudy and it means the grapes, they are used to sun, or so they're more ripe grapes. So they're more, let's say, alcohol and also color and sugar. Um, you see some of the vineyards we have that is also in the same context. It can be some of the, with the terrace, with the south orientation to keep more the light of the sun. Here you have a little bit of some of our location in a stage, eh, a totally 993 hectares in different areas of Rioja. And as you see here in the map, as I told you, this is what, what uh, you see Finca Cenicero, Finca Garbonera, this is the stage that we have. As you see, we have states in the different areas of Rioja, uh, South, and in this case, Rioja Alavesa and Rioja Alta. The main difference is Rioja Alavesa and Alta, they are close to uh, Atlantic and also the high altitude. What it means normally, they are more cold uh, weather and the skin of the grape is lighter. It means the wines, they are more light wines and more acidity. However, in the south, because there are more sun, the normally the skin is, um, I was thinking in Chinese how sometimes I speak some Chinese and, and sometimes in the testing I mix, but it means uh, thicker, you have a little bit more sugar, more alcohol, and it's more fruity. Eh? But on the lake wines, mostly uh, the reserva we are going to drink today is grace from here, from the from the same winery. However, the Baron de Lake Grand Reserva, because normally you need more uh, tanning, uh, you, we use the Finca Cenicero, you see Finca Cenicero here, we use the grace from this state because we are looking for more, more high attitude, more tanning. Okay, this is a small picture of our stage, eh? but it's just only curiosity. Finca Los Almendros also here eh, is the biggest in is the biggest estate in one plot. Eh? It's 300, it's almost 300 hectares. Mm -hmm. This is Finca Carbonera, is the highest estate in whole Rioja, around 800 of altitude, and we have eh, basically we plant white grapes. Here you can find picture of how the winemaking facilities. We are using a uh, new American oaks and French and also we are using the big uh, fundred we call in French of uh, when we do some of the wines. 
And here you have the winemakers, Gonzalo Rodriguez and Maite Calvo. Quality management, what is very important, as you know, in all Europe, we have to have very strict controls of quality. And okay, some of the picture of the monastery, you still can see the, the little capilla when they were the monks praying every day, and also some of the inside picture of the monastery. Well, as you probably see, Spain there in the Europe map, we are very, um, very, um, well, it was for the 2015, United Kingdom, Germany, Sweden, Norway is one of our members. And here is some of the wines. But okay, in this case, okay, well, we have many international. And uh, let me see if I'm able to. Angela, or maybe you need to help me how I can go out from here. Okay, thank you. <laughs> well, uh, coming to this point, um, because I've been the one to speak all the time, I don't know if you have any, any question or we can go to do the testing. All right, let me see if anybody has any first questions that you guys would like to ask uh, regarding uh, Baron de Ley or the monastery, et cetera. Before, before we move on to the tasting part, let me see if I have any hands raised. You guys have the hand raising option in Zoom if you guys want to directly speak, or you can type your question into the chat as well. All right, let me see. Do I have any questions just yet? All right. Okay. Not just yet. So maybe pe people will have questions come on later uh, once we start okay, tasting no. the wine. Allegedly. Okay. Well, uh, in this case, we are gonna we are gonna start with the first uh, wine. I guess because we have been working with Wine Connection many years already, and I know it's a very popular wine. Might be probably most of you you already tried this wine, as Angela told you in the beginning. Uh, you can you can do it first with the with the eye, and we say normally the tempranillo from Rioja is a uh, ruby color, as because it's very young. I mean, this wine is we are speaking is Reserva is 2015. It was a very good vintage. Uh, normally, the vintage is uh, as probably in a small explanation is when it's coming from the ripe of the grapes. Normally when that year season it been a very diurnal rain, been like a good and also it been a very it rained when it had to rain and also it did not have a lot of pets. The perfect timing to do the the harvest they normally if it's top they call excellent and if it's going down they can be very bad. In general uh, it's very difficult to find very bad in Rioja because it's probably, um, you didn't see it in the map, but in Rioja we are very lucky, you know, because in Rioja it's in a valley. In a valley, if you see my hands, they will be like a, two, uh, like a mountains in the north and mountains in the south. What it means, uh, stop the clouds and it normally don't rain a lot. That also avoid humidity and pets and also in the valley we can keep a very nice a uh, spring sun uh, and summer sun that what is really good for the ripeness of the grapes. So we are quite lucky and this is why in Rioja we have a quite a stable consistency in the vintage. Mm -hmm. So we can normally Rioja nowadays around the world is well known to be very uh, good quality wines and very stable quality. We see the ruby color of the Tempranillo and Tempranillo is not, I mean, when you are professional in wine, uh, we will like, uh, we are from Rioja and Tempranillo, we will like, like it's a very strong smell and are aromatic and fruity, but Tempranillo is not one of that kind of uh, strong aromatic fruit. Actually, it's quite neutral, but it's uh, red berries almost. And also you can feel the vanilla and coconut of the American oak, because this wine reserva had 20 months if American month and also 24 months in bottle. You know, uh, Rioja have that kind of like, um, I almost forgot, uh, Rioja have this kind of uh, system, they call Joven, Crianza, Rioja, uh, Reserva and Gran Reserva, 
but uh, it basically is the aging time. Joven, it will be a fresh wine, no aging time, no oak. Normally, six months after the harvest, they have the release. In general, they are most of the white varieties. Okay? You have the white, and this is because you normally you are looking for freshness, eh? acidity. Then you have Crianza, uh, under the law, is one year at least in barrel. Mm -hmm. You have Reserva, the law is one year and a half in barrel, one year and a half in bottle eh, before release. And then you have the Grand Reserva, it will be three years in bottle, two years in barrel. Eh? This is the minimum law and most of the wineries we follow eh, because as classic Rioja they used to have more barrel, they used to have more like a classic style, it was more oaky. Nowadays because all these international and new coming from Chile wines, Australia wines, they are uh, focused more in fruity and also I think because of the sugar, the freshness, this is why most of the areas and wines they'll be coming to that international taste. And I think this is why it being most of the successful Baron Delay is because we are using the grapes of Rioja Baja, where we have more sun, we are able to create this fruity and very balanced wine. Mm -hmm. Actually, in Spain is 130 as our aperitif, so it's perfect before. As probably you see, it's very, it's very elegant. You know, the Rioja, normally they are very velvety, very smoothy. Normally in Rioja, we have been doing wine many, many years. Uh, we, we have a very this um, a characteristic uh, in Palada, what is uh, well round wines, very easy to drink, very smoothy. And also, the, as you can feel in your mouth, the mix of the oak and the fruit is really really nice it's very interesting wine because as you see it's a reserva still you can feel the the fruit mm -hmm. and you can feel the acidity uh -huh. cheers to everybody <laughs> cheers as i know also because i have a couple of friends living in in singapore you are the same like in spain no you are in in total quarantine we have been, this is my eight weeks at home with my mom, and it's amazing, you know, I, I, I almost forgot what is stay with mom, you know, she's cooking, she, when well, I had to do my, my bed, because I didn't do what I was young, but I, now I do it, but it's amazing, she's cooking, she's cleaning, so basically I, I live in like a, like a king. I don't know if I'm going to pray for be a little bit more here, it's going to be very tough for me. But anyway, coming from the... This is also in Rioja. Another important thing in Rioja is Rioja is very close to the sea, as probably in one hour we have the Atlantic. It means we are uh, we, we eat a lot of fish. We also have mountains and valley, o sea, we eat a lot of meat. And also we are uh, in the Ebro River, we have a lot of vegetables. O sea, Rioja is very rich in Mediterranean food and very rich in different kind of food. And also we are very close to Basque country. What you see is more of the Estrella Michelin chef. So we are uh, used to eat everything and very, and very well cooked. What it means, the wines should be very easy to um, combine. Eh? As probably you see this wine is a medium body and it's very easy to eat with rice, uh, lamb, eh? I will choose lamb. Uh, fish, blue fish, yeah, because it's very, very smoothy. Actually, well, since you were mentioning of food pairings, Oscar, we have a question from Tom, who would like to yes. know uh, which wine goes better with a jamón serrano and manchego cheese, the Reserva or the Gran Reserva? Well, um, ooh, it's a it's a good question because the, the thing is that the, um, depend on um, you know in, in Spain we have the jamón serrano but we also have the jamón ibérico and ibérico has different you have recebo you have cebo and you have 100 percent ecom it depends on the ham some of the for example serrano is will be more strong and salty and I will probably will go better with the reserva what is more strong normally it, it, to the pairing is strong with the strong no. Um, however, 
However, if it's a very cool 100% econ, normally it's more sweet, eh? the, the meat is sweet, and also if it's sweating, it's very light, I will suggest most the Grand Reserva. Mm -hmm. So it depends on how salty and strong is the Serrano, I will say more Reserva, and Grand Reserva I will choose with the 100% econ, Iberico. And for Manchego cheese? Manchego, well, that, that is, bueno, my, this is a good question because the manchego cheese is should be bueno depend because in manche, in manchego it should be as a medium it's kind of like a curado cheese what it means is a lot of is grassy and it's a strong i will suggest a reserva also because it's stronger than the grand reserva because the grand reserva is a little bit more elegant wine it can maybe or sea the cheese can overcome the the, the taste of the grand reserva O sea, in this case, Reserva, I will say, is a little bit more powerful, more fruity, and the Grand Reserva, I will say, is a little bit more elegant. Eh? Let's, let's try the, the Grand Reserva. Now, for example, I, I don't, I, when you remember, when I opened the two wines, I smelled, and it was a little bit of reduction in the Grand Reserva. However, now I can feel the wine is open, and I can feel the normally the reduction how to describe reduction is a little bit not you cannot feel the the, the fruit you only can feel kind of like a, i don't know it's like a rotten or something like that but when it's open now you can feel the fruit eh? you can feel yeah because actually the molecules uh, the phenols uh, aromatic molecules in the wine have been in prison for such a long time mm. that they really need to get that oxygen to breathe and properly express themselves Actually, when you are a wine lovers, and I know in Singapore you are, it's very interesting. I do sometimes with my friends. You you go in drinking little by little in different times, and you can feel how the the wine and the evolution of the wine, the smell and the taste, no. This wine you can feel is totally different than the than the other one. Also, sea, the color is still because it's tempranillo. It's a ruby. And also, it's very important. This wine it's been uh, two years in in oak, one year in American oak, and one year in French oak. What is the difference between French and American? In simple explanation, is uh, American normally it gives more tints of coconut, vanilla. It's kind of sweetness. However, French they normally they toast. They are more uh, normally the French they toast more. And in general, the friends it give toffee, chocolate, leather. No, they mean it's very easy. It's very easy to understand for the smell if the wine is half like uh, American or French. In general, I will tell you in Rioja, most of the wines in general, reservas and crianzas, let's say 80%, they use in American oak. The reason is simple. It's just a question of taste. O sea, it's not because the wine is better or not. It's just taste, you know, because the Tempranillo of Rioja have been for many, many years using because it's a kind of like, a, mm, they like, it's easy. Uh, this vanilla, coconut is kind of the profile of the Rioja. Mm? However, the French, they use it, for example, nowadays, many winemakers and many wineries, or for example, in Grand Reservas, they are using French oak because they are looking that profile of taste. It's not, it's not the, I say, nothing to do with the quality because using this is better quality or less quality. The quality will be the same because the quality is depend of the cooper or what is the. It's like a, every barrel has different brand. For example, Mercedes, Ferrari. The cooper is the one that give you the quality of the barrel. And also, if it's new. Oh yeah, in Rioja normally the low you can keep in the winery eight years. Mm -hmm. In general, the uh, Rioja DOC guarantee they are not have more than eight years because I probably I don't know if you heard before when you use the barrels the this kind of like uh, the the wine it get dirty the surface and it cannot breathe or, or get the tanning and this is why in general after eight years they normally don't give the that tanning. Mm -hmm. This is why the winemakers, it depends what kind of wine they want to do, they're using uh, new or using two years or using five years. Mm -hmm. In general, 
when you have a new oak and you put it, it's very oaky. So this is why to say a new oak normally is say less than a bit three years, eh? an average of three years. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't but know. What would you, you pair have with this actually? So, you because you recommended ah. some food to pair with the reserva, but what would you recommend with the grand reserva? Since it's well, a bit more, in, uh, in Rioja, in Rioja, the base uh, in Rioja is very popular because we have a lot of lamb, we do barbecue lamb, we, we drink a lot of uh, grand reserva with barbecue lamb. Also, some people we also have paella, they, they drink also with paella and pasta because, as you see, it's very easy, very smoothy. And also, you know, for example, I can feel the strong acidity. Even in 2013, I had to confess, 2013, it was a good vintage. Uh, you have excellent, very good, good, uh, bad, and very bad. So it's in the middle because that, that year it rained a lot and it didn't, the sun, it wasn't not really the best. And this is why it couldn't get the perfect ripeness. But for example, you can feel it because when you drink, you feel the acidity. Normally, when it's very acid, it's because the weather was cold. So this is what is very exciting about drink wine. Because once you drink wine, you can feel the weather. You can feel, for example, drinking this, I can feel it was a cold weather. Eh? And when you drink the Grand Re the Reserva, you can feel it's more fruity. It means more sun. Mm -hmm. For me, uh, the Grand Reserva, I will say lamb, um, uh, Pasta, let's say pasta or rice is a good combination. All right. Um, there's actually a question from Arnold who'd like to know what year is the best year for Rioja in the, in the past 10 years? Which years would you in recommend? The, in the past 10 year, it's funny because as probably you see, we are very close to Bordeaux in the tense. Like uh, if you see in the map of Rioja, uh, Rioja is here, Bordeaux is here. So we are actually, we are three hours by car. Um, we normally keep the same vintage. The, the last excellent vintage it was 2011. So that was a very, very incredible year. Also 2010. We were very lucky like a 2010, 2011, they were excellent. From that moment, we haven't had any excellent year. We only have very good, but 2011, it was the last excellent year. All right, I hope that answered the question for Arnold. Uh, so since everybody has managed to taste both wines, I'm actually gonna go around and check with everyone which one you preferred, or if you guys managed to find the different notes that were in both wines. All right, so I'm gonna go over to, uh, let me see, Mr. Kenny, all right? I'm going to unmute you, Mr. Kenny. Hi, Kenny. Can you hear me? Uh, hi, yes. Hi. Uh, so, do you have any questions that you'd like to ask uh, Oscar or just some maybe feedback on the wines that you tried today? Let me know. Uh, not at the moment, but I love Rioja wines. It's very, very nice wines. Yeah. All right. So, is this the first time you've heard about how the, the Rioja system is made or is it's just a yes it's the first time uh, uh, uh learning for me as actually okay well if you have any questions that pop up to mind during the session don't hesitate to let me know all right thank you thank you angela okay thank you kenny okay i'm going to go over then to see if uh, let's see mr daniel has a question all right, Mr. Daniel, I'm going to unmute you now. Hi, Daniel. Hi, I have no questions. I've been drinking this wine for a year or two already. I really enjoy it. The Reserva or the Grand Reserva? More of the Reserva. Okay, yeah. because, yeah, because of the fact it's fruity and probably easy drinking. Yeah, yeah it is. And All thanks right. for the information. <clears throat> Thanks for the informational session. I, it was a great eye opener and to learn about the, the region and the wines that the vineyard produces. Oh, thank you. I'm, I'm sure Oscar appreciates the comment. Oh, and keep thank enjoying the wine. <laughs> yeah, I do. Thanks, Oscar. Thanks, Angela. Thank you very much. 
All right, let me see. I'm gonna go, I, I know who will want to ask a question. He's a big fan of your wines and go over to Leon. <laughs> Leon, how are you? <laughs> huh? Wait, I think he's still muted. One sec. Ah, the microphone, yes, I think. Uh, okay, all right. Hey, thank, thanks very much for the talk. I, uh, I've been a big fan of uh, Baron de Lay for a while now, and uh, I've tried uh, quite a few vintages from uh, 2009 to 2010. Uh, in fact, um, I have to admit that uh, the bottle that we have here is uh, 2010. Uh, we kind of missed wow. out on the... <laughs> um, I, I was trying... Angela was very nice to, uh, to release a few more bottles for sale, but it's not arrived yet. So, uh, and then I have a few other bottles, which is, uh, I think, a 2012, which is the closest. But then I figured I've got so many 2010s, so I might as well open one tonight. And, uh, and, and, and the 20, and the reserve that I've been trying uh, tonight is 2014. So it's uh, still one year older than, than what, what, what we're meant to be trying tonight. Um, but um, but what, what I would like to ask is I've, I've been tasting a lot of um, variation and uh, and it's quite enlightening because uh, what you said uh, was that um, the Grand Reserva doesn't necessarily have to be, uh, you know, a relatively bigger wine than than the uh, Reserva. And I mean, I've always assumed that, you know, that uh, you know, because it's 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 an older wine, it's 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 a lot more structured, uh, that it should be uh, a bit bigger. But uh, that's why I had some very interesting experiences, which. Um, uh, the very first one that I had was 2009, and then I had 2010. That's a Grand Reserva. I've never tasted Reserva, the Reserva version, until uh, only a couple years back. Uh, I think it must have been the uh, 2013 Reserva, and I was actually very surprised uh, to detect much stronger notes of um, vanilla, American oak, and. And you know, I, 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 you know, that that really surprised me quite a bit because that wasn't something that I was expecting. I thought, you know, that uh, because it had been um, aged a lot uh, uh, less time in, in 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 oak, it would be a lot less uh, oaky. But actually, it seemed like it was was much stronger. So, uh, so yeah, that's what I'm wondering if uh, if um, uh, is it because of the uh, the um, uh, the the age of the wine barrels you're using, uh, or is it because of a different process, or uh, is it intended to be that way, or maybe there's a bit more French oak used in um, Grand Reserva, so that's why you don't taste a lot more American oak in. Uh, in uh, that's why it tastes a lot more American oak in, in, in Reserva. Well, it's a it's a good question. Well, you know, the um, I, I understand sometimes, even for me, even for me, it's complicated. I'm expert in wine. I have a also my high education in wine and, and also working in wine many years and, and growing with wine is even is difficult for me because nowadays as probably wines is like people, they are different kind of people. And uh, nowadays, even the winemakers, they are trying to find new ways to impress. And this is why sometimes when you, for example, in an appellation like Rioja, you have Crianza, Reserva, Grand Reserva, it can, uh, like you say, you were thinking like maybe Grand Reserva it will be a more powerful wine. In this case, uh, you have to understand one thing. In general, when you are using Grand Reservas, it means it's a wine, it's a super premium wine from Rioja. It means it's long aging. You are looking for acidity because how we keep the wine longer, I'm still keeping the fruit. And also another important thing, the structure. Like not to be, because the problem of the wines, if they are not good structured, is you open the wine and it's flat. It's already gone, and also it can be vinegar. You you need the grapes, they they are uh, with high tannins. It means they give the acidity. And normally, this kind of grapes you use in for the high attitude. Uh, in general, they are grapes that have more thick skin because the tannins is in the skin. And this is why uh, Cabernet Sauvignon, for example, is well known to be one of the super premium wines to really have long. Tempranillo, however, uh, you can find, even, even when we define Tempranillo, there are different kinds of Tempranillo. This is why, for example, if you know about the Rivera de Duero wines, 
there is a tempranillo, but also this tempranillo is more inland, that normally the skin is thicker. That means they have more tannins. This is why probably, you know, Vega Sicilia is well known to have also long aging wines because of the tannin. In this case, in Rioja, we are lucky because we have the Rioja Alta and Rioja La Besa, where it's a little bit more tempranillo with, um, let's say, more tannin. And you have Rioja uh, Oriental, it called now, before Baja, where it's more sunny and you have more sugar and more fruity. In this case, for example, in Baron de Ley, it's very easy to understand the content, why the Reserva is stronger than the Grand Reserva, it's easy. The grapes are different. We are using grapes from Rioja Oriental where they have more sugar, more structure, more fruity. And that, that kind of fruity uh, gives you the, the sensation is stronger, what is true. However, the, the Rioja Grand Reserva, we using grapes from Cenicero they are close to the sea and also high gets altitude and they have more tanning. O sea, in general, they have more tanning for acidity and structure, but not from volume. Eh? Because it's different, it's different than the Cabernet Sauvignon. The Cabernet Sauvignon normally it has tannins for acidity and also it has more volume. This is why in Cabernet Sauvignon it working different than Tempranillo. Eh? Saying that, you also can find in Rioja some Grand Reservas, they have a little bit more structure. Eh? And it depends, of course, of the plot. Eh? Because not all the grapes, it depends on the plot, they have different characteristics. But in general terms, eh, Leon, to reply your question, in general terms, in Rioja, Grand Reserva is going to be always softer elegant, lighter, eh? because this is the style of the Rioja, eh? because of the Tempranillo always is going to be lighter than Cabernet Sauvignon, for example. O sea, we are more close to Pinot Noir, or in this case, Sangiovese. Mm -hmm. O sea, the skin is not as thick as it can be the Cabernet Sauvignon. Eh? I don't know if I reply your question, eh? but in normally, the, what you find in the Reserva is more structured because it's more fruity. You can feel the power. And also, another thing important I forgot that you tell me, in general, from reservas in Rioja, we use American oak. And the American oak is very easy to understand because it's, it is, like you say, sweet, vanilla, coconut. Yeah. However, however, the, um, and also it's only three years. However, in Grand Reserva, because they are long aging wines, the tanning of the oak is more let's say, inside the wine. So it's, mm -hmm. it's, more difficult. it's more difficult to find that, but you can find, for example, the leather, the toffee, because they normally use French. Right. They're using toast. Yeah, yeah. No, but I think that makes absolute, absolute sense because we, we, we came from a background of drinking uh, New World wines, Australian wines, and it's always about being, you know, blockbustery, big wines and, you know, the big wines tend to be the more expensive kinds of wines. And so when you think about the Grand Reserve, you think, oh, it's got to be more or less the same. But uh, in fact, um, I think one of our first impressions was that, you know, the first thing you get with the Grand Reserve is the smoothness. Uh, it's really, really silky smooth and, and, you know, and, and the mouthfeel. So, um, so I think that that's, uh, that was actually a very interesting kind of, uh, you know, um, observation. Mm -hmm. You know, I drink in again the Grand Reserva and every sip and smell is totally different. So the, this is uh, for you, Leon. The Grand Reserva, the, the good about this wine is the evolution. Because normally when you drink Australian wines or Chile wines and also more entry-level wines, they're normally flat. O sea, you try it and then you try, they are always the same. And nothing grown about that, eh? nothing grown, it depends. But the Grand Reserva is a wine to testing, it's a wine to to see the, the evolution. O sea, every five minutes you drink is different. O sea, yeah. the wine is creating. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that is what is the, 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 the price of the Grand Reserva. Of course, you need to understand one thing. When you're going to create a Grand Reserva, the grape is very important. You need a specific grapes that are more expensive. And also because you're going to invest. You know, this wine is seven years. O sea, you have this wine seven years before release. If, it's the, if the, you didn't do 
it well, you know how much money you, you waste. This is why when you buy a, a Grand Reserva from Rioja, there's a guarantee of the nomination of origin, they give you the guarantee is a good wine. Of course, you then you have different range on different brands. Eh? But in this case, in general, Leon, the definition of Rioja Grand Reserva, it will be sophisticated and elegant. Hmm. Yeah. Right, thank you very much. <laughs> no, you're welcome. All right, thank you very much, Daniel, you know, for the, those really, really interesting questions and the fact that you've been tasting this wine for more than I think, 10 years already. <laughs> All right, I hope I answered your questions. Uh, let me see if anybody has a question that they'd like to ask before I ask mine. Uh, let me see. Mm -hmm. Let's see chat, not just yet. Uh -huh. um, going to check with uh, Tom actually who had a question before but I just want to see if he has any feedback or any other questions that he'd like to ask Oscar. Hi Tom, you have a very interesting name, Tom Cruise, but K-R-U-S-E. <laughs> ah, okay, look, uh, awesome, thank you very much for, for this, we really enjoy it. <laughs> thank you for putting me on the spot too. Look, Sorry um, about that. <laughs> we, we had a bottle of the Reserva um, for our dinner. And I agree, the uh, Grand Reserva definitely changes as, um, as you have it in, uh, open longer. So my question is like, um, what would be some of the classic foods that you would recommend, like dinner foods that you would have with the Grand Reserva? Uh, well, um, in Rioja, we have a lot of lamb. I will say yes, is the perfect combination in Rioja is lamb with Grand Reserva. Either way, you can also use from fish because as you see, it's very elegant, it's not very strong. You can also uh, eat with some blue fish. Eh? Now, normally the blue fish is stronger. And also with some pasta and salad, it will be perfect. Yeah, uh, we, so we had the Reserva with uh, seafood pasta tonight and it was absolutely fantastic. It was absolutely spectacular. And then we had the Grand Reserva with a little bit of cheese later on. It was really awesome, too. Ah, Thank you. lovely. Lovely, yeah. Tom. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Tom, for, for those kind comments. It's, you guys are enjoying it a uh, very nice way with food. Wine's always best with food, personally. Uh, I actually have a question regarding the uh, cellaring potential, actually, for the two wines. So the Reserva is a 2015, and the uh, Grand Reserva is 2013. So how long would you recommend keeping them more uh, in the years to come? Well, it's important, it's important to understand the, I know that sometimes because um, Asia they have a very strong influence for French wine and also uh, even France have different kind of wines and most of the French wines is to, to, to drink also at once. But they have that kind of like a concept for the movies of Lafitte and Petrus that they are wines that can be 20, 30 years, no? And we always keep in mind that kind of like a, a people investing in to buy the wines now and to negotiate and to sell five years later. Of course, there is a diff uh, in wine you have different business mindset. But saying that in Rioja, normal when we release the vintage is to, to be drink in that moment. However, because they are good grapes and there is a very strong quality control and, and it's a very good wines. Uh, in general, Reserva, I will say to drink before, o sea, for example, now you have the 2000, uh, let's say Reserva 2015, we are in 2020. I will say a couple of years more or three years will be still the wine it will be going better and evolute in a good way more than three years more the wine is it will be go down eh, in general terms mm -hmm. in this case because this is a was very good vintage so you can feel it's a very strong acidity and very uh, a strong structure however the grand reserva because they are wines with more uh, acidity and more tannins i will say 
be, uh, they can keep at least five years more, and then for five years it will be go down. Mm -hmm. But of course, it depends also, it's very important the way you keep the wines, eh? that is very important, eh? and also uh, the vintage. Eh? For example, this vintage 2013, it was not excellent vintage. Uh, it will say maybe I will suggest no more than three years. Suggestion, because it was a good vintage. However, if it's in a, the, the vintage like Leon say 2011 or 10, that the, the one you were drinking now, I think it was 10, that wine probably it can keep 10 years more perfectly, no problem. Mm -hmm. But let's say, to have an average, because we have to speak about average, let's say reservas three years, grand reservas five years, eh? an average of maybe like this is easier. Okay, well, thank you. Yeah, makes it's definitely easier, is clear for, for everybody here. Uh, okay, well, thank you very much for answering that question. Um, I'm going to go around and see if anybody else has some few last questions that they would like to ask before uh, we reach the end of today's live masterclass. Uh, I'm going to check with, let me see. Mm -mm -mm. Maybe this is Sue. All right, Mrs. Sue, I'm going to unmute you now. It doesn't seem to be working. Hi. Hi, Sue. Hi, everyone. Uh, thanks for the, the talk. It's awesome. Thank you very much. Um, in fact, I'm not drinking. I'm actually at work. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well. <laughs> yeah. Part of the essential services, I'm in the medical line. So, unfortunately, I can't, can't drink before I start work. <laughs> so, um, have, fun, have fun, guys. And thanks for the talk. All right. Thanks for listening um, in uh, from yeah. for work. Thank you very much for your for, for yeah. your service for doing the different time. <laughs> nice, nice. Enjoy the wine, guys. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, yeah, people tuning in from work too. So it's always great to learn some uh, some new stuff nice. every day. <laughs> All right. Okay. I think uh, any more raise hands any last questions that you guys would like to to ask oscar or feedback just uh, according to the wines and from you get what you guys have tasted tonight i'm gonna check maybe with one last person who asked a clue, maybe young Jin. all right i'm going to unmute you now hi young sam uh no i <laughs> Thanks, thanks for the for thinking on the spot as well. <laughs> but I, um, I drank this uh, wine like, just recently, in fact, uh, during this lockdown. I, I usually am, uh, just stick to some of the other wines that I drink when I, I've grown to like Rioja quite a bit. So when I got a chance to, to buy this and, and do this uh, masterclass, I, I jump on it and, and I really thank uh, Oscar for, for sharing like, all this knowledge. and. Um, yeah, I, I can see myself like you know drinking more of this in the future. I find it a, a very interesting wine and um, you know the structure and all uh, just easy to drink as well. So yeah, <laughs> that's about it uh, for me. All right, no, that's good. That's good. Thank you very much for your for your nice comments and feedback. And well, I'm glad you discovered the wine with us today and learned some more stuff on it. So I'll let you enjoy the rest of the bottle. <laughs> mm -hmm. Thank all right. you, Yum. All right. Well, if nobody else has any last Angela, question, yeah. See, Sorry. It seems Angela, I did so good. Like everyone understood everyone understood everything. <laughs> You're very clear. Yeah, definitely. They learned a lot of stuff today. Okay. Well, if nobody has any more questions, I'm going to bring tonight's. Uh, oh, you have another question, Leon? No. Oh, I saw you raise your hand. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I just saw that say say something because um, I think you know just a, a quick follow up from from uh, our experiences drinking wine and um, and basically um, Rioja has been the the kind of a European gateway wine for us because uh, like we said we've been very much uh, New World wine drinkers and until uh, recently I mean one of the things is that we we've always Always try to look for the, the oaky, the big oaky kind of wines, and and it's very hard to find that kind of oakiness 
in new world wines, you really have to get you know the really expensive wines before you can get that kind of um, you know that kind of that kind of um, uh, uh, you know uh, wines with that kind of intensity of you know, the vanilla and all that. So uh, so then we we discovered uh, Rioja back in um, I don't know it must have been about. 10, 10, 10 years ago, 11 years ago, 12 years ago. And, um, and there was a 10 year old Rioja, not necessarily the best now. Uh, I mean, now that we realize it wasn't probably the best, but it was really nice, oaky. Uh, you know, it had a kind of very classic kind of Tempranillo, you know, you know the, 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 the skins kind of tasted a bit charred. But, uh, but then from that point onwards, we, we sort of, uh, you know, persisted and, and we tried lots of different kinds of Rioja and we found Baron Lule and, and, you know, it, so, so essentially from that point onwards, it kind of not, not only just gave us an insight into Spanish wines, but it sort of um, made us a bit more confident to, uh, to reach out to other kinds of European wines as well. And, you know, so for instance, um, uh, we've, we've, had been, ha we've had a few bad experiences with French wines, but that was, you know, largely because of you know, going to the supermarkets and experimenting. But, but then we also, I mean, through wine connection, we also managed to find some really nice French wines as well. So, so I would say that it's, it's, it's largely Rioja that, that sort of introduced uh, European wines for us, and it still kind of remains more or less a kind of staple um, stapled European wine. So uh, just want to say, well, thanks for, for, for producing you know, wines like that and you know, keep, up, keep up the good work. Thank you very much, Leon. Eh? All right. All right. I hope we can meet soon in one of our testing in person. Normally yeah, I go yeah. every year to the, to the fair of the, the organized, but this year I don't know it's going to be possible. Yeah, we, we missed the last one. We I, I got kind of excited by that as well. I think I remember there was um, uh, a wine pairing, uh, a, a degustation kind of dinner that Wine Connection organized with uh, Baron de Lay. But I think for one reason or another we, we missed that. So I, I was feeling kind of disappointed. <laughs> and then when I when I found that uh, you know you were doing this master class mm. tonight, I said, oh, we have to do it. <laughs> <laughs> we will have the we will have a chance. I guess I, right. we will have a chance. I, I love okay. it because for me, it's easy. I normally I live in in Hong Kong. Right. Uh, based in Hong Kong is easy, but let's see because actually now the the question is, we don't really know as people like me how we are going to be able to do our normal job. The thing is, I expect I expect after summer time maybe we have done some kind of uh, let's say when you go to the airport, they, they do the, the test, they give you that you are free and that you don't need to do quarantine. But till this, we will need to keep like this. But I guess next year, it will be everything right. going to the IP. Uh, see, I hope to see you soon. Okay, well, uh, oh, likewise. Uh, right. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Leon. I uh, actually have one last question before I uh, saw Gerardo said at the end, are there any winery tours? About. Well, in general, you know, the thing is, uh, it's a good question. In general, we don't, we don't open, we don't open. The, uh, it's not uh, Baron de Ley in on uh, public open. However, being a customer, so say, special things for customers, we do it. So in this case, uh, for example, the white connection as because it's, we are very good uh, partners, and for many years, it, uh, Angela, tell me, Oscar, you know, uh, I think it was Gerardo. Uh, Gerardo is a good customer of us, and Baron de Ley would like to, is in Rioja, would like to visit the winery. In normally, in this case, if it's open the winery, it will be not a problem. But, in, but it's, not, it's not open, or so it's not public open. Right. My boss always say, my boss, I say, my boss, it's a very beautiful place, but my boss always say, we are specialists in make wine, we are not experts in tourists. But however, we welcome all our customers. <laughs> All right, he's asking when you can set it up for next year. Well, Daryl, you send me an email, let me know, and then I'll pass on the message <laughs> to Oscar when, if you, whenever you plan to go to Europe. Just yeah, you can send an email to the address of this session. <laughs> yes, it's going to be easy. All right, okay, well, perfect, perfect. Well, just before I close the session, I've usually like to take some screenshots for those who are uh, comfortable being on camera with everybody with their wine glasses raised up so that we can share it on Instagram. All right. If you guys don't want to be on camera, no problem. If you're, if you're comfortable, go ahead. <laughs> All right.
And everybody got a glass of wine. Okay. And one, two, and three. Perfect. Okay. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> Thank you for everyone. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I'm, I'm glad you guys enjoyed the session. Once again, if you have any question that will co that comes up to mind uh, in the days following uh, today's masterclass, don't hesitate to send me an email. I will forward the question to Oscar and get it answered to you as soon as possible. All right. Well, uh, once again, thank you everybody for joining us today. Uh, I don't know if Oscar has a few last words you'd like to say before I close the session. Well, I've been a big pleasure to me to be the first time. I hope I hope I did good because and normally I I know that they say technological men, but seems pretty good. Eh? Enjoy your Singapore quarantine. We will do the same with good wine and good company. It's always better. Unless I'm gonna do something normally that is in a, in Rioja we seen is like a a mi me gusta el pipi pipi pipi. Con la bota en pinar para la papa, con el pipiri pipi, pi, con el pa para la papa. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> this is in Rioja when you are with friends drinking wine, in in the, you always singing. So we couldn't we couldn't leave this session without the Rioja typical and folklore. Mm? Oh, Classico. nice to meet you. <laughs> Muchas gracias. <laughs> Nada. Ángela, tienes el micrófono apagado. Ah, perdón, perdón. Thanks for noticing. <laughs> All right, well, I wish everybody a wonderful evening uh, tonight. and Enjoy the wines that are uh, still in your bottle, unless you guys reach the end of the bottle. No judgment, <laughs> no problem. And I'll see you guys all next time. All right, well, have a nice evening, everybody. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Thank you, thank you, bye. Bye, thank see you, you. Bye, bye bye. Take care.